Looks like it's taken it. Three, two, one. Yep. Boom. Lord, we give you thanks. 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 We give you thanks because you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. We are grateful for your love, mercy, and great and great having the audio work. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Okay, so happy Thanksgiving to all. Uh, we are hopeful that you are in a Thanksgiving kind of mood for today, uh, that you don't get caught up in the uh, preparations and the parades and the football. Those, those are very uh, important things in some lives, but in our lives, we give thanks to God. Have a blessed Thanksgiving. Trusting God for blessing me with y'all. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm grateful for a lot of things, but mostly I'm grateful for the goodness of God and the mercy that his people poured out on us. Okay, so uh kind of a kind of a jump from the chaos of the book of Judges to have a day of Thanksgiving in the midst of all of that is a um is a blessing to me. So um if you were tuning in, hoping to hear the rest of the uh, story with all of these end of judges stories. Um, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. But you're going to have to view in tomorrow. And so Amen. here we are. Uh, blessed Thanksgiving. Now, let me... Um, next slide, please. Okay. A lot of cultures don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, Good morning, Crystal. I'm glad you're with us. I am actually thankful for a number of things, including Crystal. Amen. A number of people, including Crystal and uh, everybody. Thanks be to God. Okay. So uh, we have some famous uh, milestones in our history. And this is the Mayflower. The Mayflower is a, a boat that traveled from England to North America and landed in on Cape Cod first and um, and offended the natives because uh, they found they found uh, corn on the grounds and didn't know that the corn was burial rites of some of the natives. So they dug up the graves of some of the natives which certainly is not the way to make a best impression. Mm. So this is a this is a boat called the Mayflower. Actually, two boats tried to come along, but the um, uh, but the Speedwell did not have any Speedwell, mm -hmm. and it was uh, leaky. And some of the uh, some of the pilgrims and and uh, uh, decided. Well, if the boat's leaking, I'm not going to get on that one boat. I'm going to go home. And they went home. Uh, actually, the speedwells broke down twice. They thought they had it fixed to get out to sea again. And then they said no. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this place called the gun room is between the decks, the between the decks part. And it's about the size of our sanctuary. So, Rich, can you highlight it, or can you print? No, the no, go. No, okay. So this part from the right of the gun room all the way to the forward part is where the pilgrims and the um, <laughs> and the, uh, the laborers that came across the sea. A uh, hundred and two people lived in this for sixty six days, and the hundred and two people lived in a space similar to our sanctuary. So if you can just imagine, uh, you know, sitting in our sanctuary with a with a hundred seats is pretty comfortable for an hour or a couple hours, but then you think, okay, 24 hours turns into 48 hours, turns into, mm -hmm. so they weren't allowed on deck except between the storms because people that go on deck get in the way of the 32, 37 man crew or whatever it is. And in fact, one guy got so frustrated with being below decks with no with no windows and the boat going, oh, oh, 
along the storm. Then he dashed up on deck, got swept overboard by a wave, and fortunately he grabbed onto something on the way down. And the uh, crew, who did not like, who typically didn't like the, the, the travelers, hauled him back on boat. And here he is, soaking wet and uh, and cold. Good. And he made everybody else be out of their out of their their uh, their duties sailing the thing to haul him back in. Uh, so the amazing, there's a couple of miracles that happened here. Sixty six days of passage. Some of the days were clear, but you know, some of you who have sailing experience know about nor'easters and what uh, and, deep blood. <laughs> And what a what a horrific thing that is! Um, the modern uh, cruise ships have windows, so you can at least see the waves washing over. Uh, like I've told you before, uh, my mom was on a cruise ship, and they uh, they kept trying to avoid the storm, and it kept chasing them. Mm. And uh, so much so that she heard the silverware, the table, the plates and stuff crashing in the uh, that's all. I mean, those things are pretty secure. So, uh, but she wanted to go on deck and see the waves wash over the thing. And mm. They said, no, no, no. Because the other <laughs> little old ladies in the boat really wanted to climb onto their beds. But climbing onto your bed does not help you if the thing capsizes. So we get 66 days of tossing. And one of the miracles is that one person died. Actually, three of the women were pregnant on the trip and, and, and they had a birth on the trip, one birth, one death. And you would think, you know, this is this is an amazing miracle. Uh, so they got to they got to Cape Cod and eventually Plymouth, and they had to live on the boat while the uh, repair while the their Rebuild, housing was being yeah, built on shore. Prepared. And uh, and they lost half the pe so they lost one on the trip. And then they lost half of their population on Sick. in in that first brutal winter where they didn't have any clue as to what to do. Okay, mm -hmm. so that the replica of this thing, I guess the second, third, fourth replica, is in Plymouth Harbor now, and you can go see it. Uh, but but just trying to imagine a hundred people sleeping in our sanctuary, uh, uh, just mind-boggling that you that you get no you can't hardly breathe because and there's cargo animals below so the stink is uh, but many of them came for the purpose of being obedient to what god wanted them to do many of them came because they thought that the shores of america of the north shore was uh made with gold and jewels so uh i can't tell you that everybody on board had uh, godly intentions, but some some certainly did. Okay, next slide. Um, Pastor, yeah. I'm told by mom, my mom, that I'm a Cape Codder, sure. obviously, but that my generations somehow went back to the Mayflower. Yeah. So to be a Cape Codder, 30, 30 uh, million descendants yeah. of those 102. Yeah. Or, I don't know, that might make up true. Of the 102 and of the 32 crew, so wow. 150, 30 million. A lot. A and lot. Kathy was Kathy actually had relatives on the beach, and and people relatives on the boat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had relatives somehow. I I I haven't figured it out, but I was told. So um, you do. Yeah, I think so, a lot of people do. So here we are, in a new world uh, to them, and. Uh, there were skillful tradesmen and farmers, but but it's a whole new world. If you aren't used to a particular climate, um, then you are not ready for a climate of winter. And the the the, um, the food supplies were down to the families would feed their children one kernel of corn. Well, wow. and they dropped half the population. So, so we're in dire straits here. There is just uh, sickness. And I mean, there's no, there's no, um, 
scurvy and sickness and just miserable lives. And so, good morning, Cynthia. Um, so, into their village walks an English speaking Indian. Wow. How did he get to be English speaking? Well, 10 years before, he got kidnapped and turned into a slave and and carted over to England where he learned English and then he got he got saved because um, some of the church people kind of adopted him learned English made it back to his homeland to the North American homeland and wow. walked into his village and it was entirely wiped out there was no survivors left of his village now, whether they were captured or died of um, disease or whatever, all kinds of theories about that. And then he turns around and walks into Plymouth Plantation. Well, a miracle. A miracle. God. God's hand. Now, his skill sets when he was in captivity uh, were important because he learned English. But in his native land, he taught them how to fertilize crops. Mm. And in fact, some of the crops from his tribe were just starting to were just starting to be harvested. So uh, so all of a sudden you've got this man that saved their lives, saved the expedition, saved everything because God had provincially brought him to England learned English and brought him home just just in time. And we are we are astonished by the miraculousness, is that a real word? Um, that of God's provision. Like 10 years before when he was kidnapped, he didn't think this is God's provision. He mm -hmm. thought I'm a slave and then carted over there, learned English, got saved, came back, and you think and he walked into them at the most desperate time in their lives. And so you think, well, the miracle of this is just mind-boggling. Rich, mm -hmm. Mike, other comments before we go on to the kind of Kind of like Joseph. Yeah. You know, I mean, he obviously had faith or yeah. he, he, he got faith and uh, made it back home. Yeah. And uh, was blessed. And was blessed and was a blessing. Yeah, it Rich. was a blessing to the other folks. Rich, what's Holy your God. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, uh, must have been a, a amazing experience. We run into a Native American that could speak English. Yeah, mm. that's like uh, just trying to picture it. Uh, the first people that encountered him. Yeah, uh, yeah it just one in a billion. <laughs> how, how do you put it into words? And then you think uh, <laughs> there was. No, next slide. Next tab. So he taught them how to fertilize their crops. He taught them how how fishing worked. But they knew some of that already, but particularly in these waters. Um, and all of a sudden, the colony is thriving. So they declare a day of thanks mm. because it, because the people have. That a number of the pilgrims had a heart for serving God, and all of a sudden, they have survival. They're, they're more than surviving. So, uh, Squanto brought, they agreed to have together their Thanksgiving, and he brought 99 of his best friends. Wow. <laughs> and you think, whoa, well, that's going to, well, they didn't come empty handed. They brought uh, deer and they brought. Uh, maybe even turkeys, but anyway, they brought enough food to supply this party, this Thanksgiving mm -hmm. party. I can't do that any better than that. So for three days, Thanksgiving was celebrated, including uh, foot races, uh, strength competitions, maybe even axe throwing. I mean, it was just a a, a glorious three days of understanding that God Almighty had saved them. And you see in the picture here, the, the uh, Europeans, now the pilgrims, serving their 
new best friends, these Indians, these Indians, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you know, love just abounding in this um, in this Thanksgiving holiday. From now, the people on the boat came from a number of different cultures. There was some Dutch there. There were some Brits there. There were some all kinds of different people jumped on this boat, including some tradesmen and some sailors and whatever. But here at Thanksgiving, there is um, there is joy that they they've made it through the first, and now they have a chance to celebrate together. Mm. They still in today's culture. Today is Thanksgiving. For years, we've celebrated Thanksgiving. There's high school football games. Yeah. They run um, marathons, uh, parades. parades. Yeah. Every I mean, name we, is a holiday. It's a holiday that we still celebrate. Uh, well, they, 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 today is today officially is, Indigenous Peoples yeah, Day. Yeah. yeah. So, and then you think about Abraham Lincoln made a great speech about Thanksgiving, actually proclaiming it, and that's and that's in the 1800s. So you know for for a long time, it was celebrated scatterly. Um, it wasn't an official day. A national so. holiday. That's right. Is that so, when it became a, I'm sorry, is that when it became a national holiday? I think so. That far back? I thought it was like Teddy Roosevelt's time, somewhere on the turn of the century. It's okay. Well, it was, as a national holiday, I mean, people yeah. were celebrating it. Sure. I, I, but no, I yeah. gotta look it up. Yeah, but it was celebrated ask, anyways. Uh, ask Siri. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look it up. We'll look it up. Right. But that brings us into Thanksgiving Day and so grateful for the parades, the floats, the football Everything. games, the turkey. But but what are we truly thankful? Next slide. Next step. We are thankful to God Almighty. Uh, so if you if you track down the scriptures on thankfulness, you find all kinds of really cool things in in the scriptures about thankfulness. Let's read 16 and 17, please. First Thessalonians chapter uh, we're in five, yeah, yep. five sixteen, and we're in the uh, New International Version. Yeah. Rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, so Amen. often people ask me, what is the will of God? And there's actually seven different times that the will of God is stated, like this is the will of God. But the first one that I always think about is give thanks. Amen. Wait a second, that's the will of God for me? Yes. <laughs> and you think, how... Oh, how cool is that and how amazing is that and how unhuman that is, how unnatural that is in the sense. So about six different things we can learn from this verse. Help yeah. me out, guys. I love hearing thank you. Yeah. I, it's such a joy nowadays when you do something for someone mm -hmm. and just they turn around and say thank you. Yeah. It's such a great feeling to hear. Thank you. Um, I, I often am guilty of of asking or telling people to do stuff, and then and then I hear the thank you and the didn't come out. So I tell them, like when we're moving stuff around for the J one, everything I say starts with starts with thank you. And if you don't hear it come out of my mouth, just know that it's there yeah. in the background. But but to be vocal about it has a yeah. It just it, it brings joy to somebody. Yeah. It's better than money. It's better than yeah. it's better than anything because it comes from the heart. That's true. Yeah, and, Rich. Yeah. What are your thoughts about these verses? Yeah, this is uh, you know this is um, a prompt to remember that uh, we have an eternal perspective. Hallelujah. That uh, we can give thanks because everything here is circumstantial. It's it's mm. temporal. Yeah. It's passing, good or bad. Yeah, yeah. you can imagine Amen. being on that Amen. boat, uh, sixty days into the trip, and still to not seeing land, and uh, right there, just the animal stench and everything else. But and getting through the first winter when you realize, you know, come spring and half of the people you left 
the continent with uh, are dead. Mm -hmm. It's God's will. It's got you got to remind yourselves because all of this is 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 going to pass away anyway. Yeah, it's the eternal perspective that we have to cling to, and in that perspective, yeah. we can certainly give thanks at all times that that Jesus opened up that perspective Hallelujah. through the resurrection for us. And that's that's where our focus should be. Can't it's not easy. I mean, you got to look beyond the natural circumstances, but that's uh, that's where our focus should be, and that is a transcendent focus that right. that will rise you above um, yes. the circumstances yeah. that we're currently going through whatever they may be amen so what does what does giving thanks do to your emotions well when you're having a bad day or when things are not going good for the whole week or you get a gas in your tire which i said i just <laughs> went to um, sometimes you got to say thank you and sometimes you got to realize when you do, when that comes to you and you're able to say thank you in the bad times, yep. they're not so bad. Yep. God has a reason. Yep. God knows. Yep. Yep. And and so you just be grateful through everything. Rich, thank what you. happens emotionally when you give thanks? Well, you get outside of yourself, first of all. You're not mm -hmm. uh, ca caught up in you and your decisions and your circumstances and how, you know, it's all it's not all about you that's right there is some there's someone else uh something else beyond you uh that is an agent for the condition you're in and uh, recognizing that it is god amen uh this puts things in proper perspective and you got proper perspective you've got balance in your life uh you understand you know things fall into place um and again, getting back to that eternal perspective right. um, gets you above and beyond uh, any circumstances here that might be dragging you down. And all okay, let's flip it over. Get what happens if you don't give thanks? <laughs> what happens physiologically if you don't give thanks? You end up within yourself, yeah. pouting, and it gets worse. It does not change the problem. It's just the perspective your heart, your spirit, mm -hmm. everything is gone towards, oh, me, oh, my. That's right. And you can't see beyond it. That's right. And the deeper you fall into, oh, me, oh, my, the worse it gets. Yeah. Like like, uh, like you just mentioned, your heart, your blood pressure, your brain, every bodily function is worse <laughs> as you don't give thanks. Yeah. Oh. And it's not like giving thanks is magic. But in one sense, it is a, a cheerful heart mm. it does much good. Yep. So rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks. This is God's will for you. Mm -hmm. And so even if you can't do it because you feel it. Now, I'm not saying give thanks because you fell down a flight of stairs. Uh, thank God that he is God in the midst of you lying there. And I, you know, I'm you still know, alive. <laughs> and you're still God in the midst of this all. Yeah. It's like that song, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. That's right. Amen. Okay, rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks to God in all circumstances, for this is God's will. Mm -hmm. Let's try the next slide. Those are separate verses, 16, 17, and 18. I just noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> See, verse 16, rejoice always. That's Good. enough to focus on. 17, pray continually. <laughs> 18, give thanks. In all circumstances. Mm. Great Amen. stuff. Where are Amen. we going? Next next tab. Ephesians. Okay. 19. Ephesians 19. So Ephesians 5.19, and again, NIV. Uh, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns. Okay, so just to back off a little bit here. Uh, so steer clear of debauchery. That's the previous, okay? Instead of debauchery, be filled with the Spirit. Yes. speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. These are all products of the Spirit, so be okay. filled with the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always Amen. giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so if we think about this as a uh, progression, that's one way to think about it, but if you think about it as a uh, a smorgasbord or a mm -hmm. um, stone soup, 
where everybody in the village had something. So psalms and hymns and songs in the spirit, and mm -hmm. music yeah. in your heart to the Lord, and always give thanks. They're so they're so mushed together. They're so uh, intertwined that you think, wow. As, as we sing songs and hymns and be filled with the Spirit, there's yeah. a thankfulness that comes to us like, oh, God, I give you thanks. Grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Grateful. I'm, I'm reminded if anybody, I was paralyzed at a time, and we were just talking about this, how I'll dance and I'll sing. I really can't dance and sing. And I'll just be grateful that I can walk again. That's right. And I say to myself, man, even though I fall down sometimes, but I get up and I just am so grateful from where I came. Sure. And when we look back at where we came, our testimony, how far we come, we have to be grateful That's and right. thankful. And without without a test, there's no testimony. And there's mm -hmm. people that, that preach a Jesus, that come to Jesus and they never have any problems. And they were, that's absurd. Uh, next next tab. Sing and make music from your heart. Okay. Sometimes I'm in the car and I'll just be singing to myself and or out loud and, and the words don't even make sense no, or no. whatever, but it's just unbelievable. And Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6, still in the... Um, and uh, NIV. Well, this is the NIV on the screen. New international version there. Yeah, it doesn't say it up there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Amen. So how does our prayer and petition life, how does thanksgiving affect? I also want to ask the negative question. But, I, but I'll do that later. How does Thanksgiving affect our prayer and petition? You're handing it over God, and you're 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 taking it from you and giving it to God. That's and, right. And, uh, but the backwards of that, and the problems with our prosperity teachers is they say you give thanks before you got it, and there's a sense of that, but only if you're in the will of God, not because God, I thank you for the Cadillac you're going to give me with mm -hmm. a free bathroom house that you're going to get me um you can only make that kind of prayer with thanksgiving if you have the heart of god not because mm -hmm. and the pros problem with the prosperity people is they think if they speak something god almighty has to answer their speaking and that is heresy and that is lunacy god almighty doesn't have to do anything god almighty is god almighty he cannot he does not respond because you demand something. No more than when your three-year-old demands, I want to eat a whole gallon of chocolate, you can say, mm -hmm. no. no. <laughs> so God, so we present our, it's it's having the heartbeat of God that we Amen. know how to pray. And once we know how to pray, we can pray with thanksgiving. God, I, I have your heart in this situation. I pray for it. Uh, and I give you thanks. And that is perfectly acceptable rather than the other way around. God, I have this demand for you. Um, no. So, but how do we be anxious for nothing? Because, because we have a heart of prayer and a heart of thanksgiving. And because it is good to know that God Almighty is not overwhelmed with my situation. Yes. Even though I often am to my to my shame. He is not. So be anxious for nothing because he's got it covered. Let's yeah. try one more slide. Every situation. <laughs> okay, 15. Colossians. 15. Okay, uh, so Colossians 3.15 and are we in the NIV still? I guess. I don't know. Okay. 3.15 Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Mm -hmm. Amen. So be thankful, live at peace. Let, let your heart be overwhelmed with peace and be thankful. So, so often, so often, like Mike started this whole conversation with, we... 
But okay, thanks. God did something wonderful. So I was, we were in church and there was a hurricane approaching someplace. And God made it go all around it. And I thought that the next service, the entire church would be filled with people giving thanks. Mm -hmm. Two people came. Wow. And you just think, how, how horrific that is that God did a miracle with a hurricane and you don't choose to give him thanks. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and I, my heart was a little judgmental. Now I understand his work and family and all kinds of stuff. But if God does a miracle, you need to testify to it and give thanks to it. Imagine how God feels <laughs> when you don't say thank you. And so many of us, I'm guilty of it, that that we don't say thank you when God does, like you said, a miracle. Yeah. And we really should be thankful to God. I mean, I think out of all we've talked about, being thankful, it just feels so good to hear that. And God must, it just must tickle his heart when we stop and say thank you. One more, one more tab, Rich. One more tab. Psalm 107. Uh, New King James, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because he is good. Because he commands it. And his mercy endureth forever. How, how cool it is that the creator of the universe is merciful to us. It just it blows me away. And then if you've been redeemed, say so. Amen. Testify to his goodness. Amen. 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 And amen. That Let's go back so to the good. very first tab, Rich. So have a blessed Thanksgiving. <laughs> we talked this morning about the, the journey on the Mayflower. Uh, April showers bring Mayflowers, Mayflower bring pilgrims. Mm. I remember that from being like 10 years old. <laughs> so have a blessed Thanksgiving. We are grateful to the cross and to the resurrection. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you did miracle after miracle after miracle to let these pilgrims survive. We thank you that you did miracle after miracle after miracle so we can survive. Let us let us grow in your grace, in your power, in your mercy, in your patience, in your perfect peace. And let us always have thankful hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you that for people that aren't even believers, celebrate this day and say thank you. They don't even know who they're saying thank you to. But Lord God, I pray that you introduce yourself to them. Yes. Let us be a part of it, Lord God. Give us the words to speak. Yeah. And let us be thankful. Let us say thank you. Lord God, help us stand out from the world and say thank you. Yes. And let us be grateful in the bad times. Help us to say thank you, Lord God. Help us to get through things. But we know that eternity is with you. And everything here is just temporal. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for all you've done in my life, Lord God. Yes. I ask that you be with our pastors, our leaders, that you would help them today and always to be thankful. Lord God, that you would protect them, that you would heal them, yes. that you would put a hedge of protection around this church, around our leaders, Give them thanks, Lord God. And I thank you for everybody. I thank you for this meeting every morning, Lord God, that it helps me to be thankful throughout the day, Lord God. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you on this day especially. Let this be, day be our model for every day that we may be thankful through all our circumstances and with gratitude, have, conduct our lives before you with thanksgiving, with appreciation for all that you've done and all that you intend to do, all that you will do, as your word specifies. Uh, so it will be to be part of that plan. It's just, it's just, uh, 
it's too much to put into words. It's just too great. So thank you for it all. Help us uh, uh, with your guidance to um, live the lives that uh, you want that ultimately glorify you yeah. in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen, amen. 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 God is good. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Dot, dot, share and.